Environmentalist and black activist Marquita Bradshaw delivered a stunning upset in the state of Tennessee in the Democratic primary for a Senate seat. Now this was unexpected, the Democratic establishment didn't expect it. I gotta be honest, I'm not part of that establishment. I didn't see this coming and part of the reason why is because Marquita Bradshaw didn't raise a giant sum of money. She ran on a campaign that really emphasized on and focused on environmental racism, something that really isn't on most people's radar. And so I'm very appreciative that she's bringing this up. Bradshaw, a political novice who grew up in South Memphis, won by roughly nine percentage points to become the first black woman to gain a major party's nomination for the US Senate in Tennessee. Bradshaw finished ahead of four component opponents, including James Mackler, an army veteran backed by the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, who according to filings with the Federal Election Commission had raised more than $2 million. Wow. The most recent filings available showed that Bradshaw's campaign had raised only 8,000 400 by the end of March. Now she told reporters that toward the end of her campaign, right before the election, there was a little influx of money, but obviously nowhere near $2 million. And JR, before we hear your thoughts, I just wanna <laughs> hear a little bit from Marquita Bradshaw's victory speech last night. We utilize environmental justice principles to shape a US Senate platform. The first time ever in United States history. People want change and they want a voice that would listen to them first and be able to implement policies that address the issues that we are living today. I was truthful in this campaign, talking about environmental racism and how it affected my South Memphis community. I love it, man. This is the thing. I listened to um, a, a good section of her speaking there and there was a lot of pauses. There was a lot of looking down at her notes and her speech, things supposed to write. And <clears throat> it had those, it had the elements of she's not a polished politician, right? I love that. That's what Me too. Need. That's the whole she's point. She's real. That's she's the real. whole point. We need representative government. How are you gonna have people that represent people if they're not a person? You know, if it's not a human being that's lived the experiences of the place that she's supposed to represent, if you're supposed to uh, to be the voice of people that aren't in that position, you have to know the people. You have to know the things that they're going through. You have to probably have experienced the things that those people are going through that maybe they don't even know in many times is affecting their lives because you have this position where you're like, I've noticed this. She did work with the Sierra Club around there. She, as you said, she's an environmental activist and how it specifically affects communities of color. Which I think even communities of color many times don't think about. So if you have someone who knows what everyone in the community knows, but also knows a little bit more than what people in the community have time to research and find out and know, that's what, exactly what you need. Not someone who tells tells me all the time, which Mike Pence is the best at this. The American people want this. The American people, this is what they want. Who, who, which American person told you that? Or is this something that someone wrote for you? And in fact, I wish you would have ditched that paper and told us how she feels tonight. Because that's a very exciting moment for her and I wanted her to really be herself and tell us who she is and tell us what she's working for and how she's gone through this entire thing in her life to do so. You can also tell that she was like overwhelmed with emotion, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and it was just, it was so nice to see. Uh, a real person deliver a real victory speech. Uh, and yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, I also love this uh, statement from her. She said, working people showed that my viability was different. I knew it was going to happen. I could see the momentum. So while everyone else was like asleep at the wheel, um, she was like, no, I see it because I'm actually on the ground like really connecting with my constituents and really there's there's no replacement for that. Uh, there's no ad that can really overcome the effectiveness and the power of connecting with people on a more deeper level, on a personal level, talking with them, hearing them out and, and just promising a, a better option than what we've seen from candidates, uh, both on the left and the right so far. Now, what is likely to happen moving forward? Well, Bradshaw will face um, former US ambassador to Japan, Bill Haggerty, who defeated Nashville uh, trauma surgeon 
Manny Sethi in the Republican primaries. So as it stands now, people feel that it is unlikely that Bradshaw can beat Haggerty, who has been endorsed by Trump and all his cronies. But you know, I, I don't want to limit what she can accomplish. I mean, yeah. people didn't believe in her before, and look at what she managed to do. Um, so that Senate seat uh, was uh, vacated by Lamar Alexander, and it's been a Republican seat since 1994. Uh, the previous senator uh, who was a Democrat was actually Al Gore. So, kind of gives you a sense of what that seat has been like, or what that, uh, you know, what voters have been like in Tennessee lately. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that she has no shot. Um, also, Haggerty is uh, the exact type of cowardly, feckless, pathetic, self-interested <laughs> Republican that Donald Trump would endorse. And so he used to be buddies with Mitt Romney. They used to like do business together. Mm. And uh, since Donald Trump and Mitt Romney don't like each other, Haggerty turned his back on his own friend. Uh, Haggerty leveraged Trump's endorsement to brush back attacks on his previous business and political ties to Mitt Romney, who now, according to Haggerty, is a weak need Republican senator who voted to convict Trump during the impeachment trial. The These irony. guys, the irony, so pathetic. The weak need one is the one who stood up for two times, by the way. Let's keep it real. Mitt Romney stood up a total of three times against Trump. But even in doing so, you know, you can congratulate him for the moments of clarity. But that's that's his weakness. All the weaknesses that he stood up to Trump a few times, and therefore he's weak need. Not the guy who literally got on it, not literally, but proverbially got on his knees to kiss the ring of Donald Trump to make sure that he has some some uh, some near he gets near the proximity of power there in the White House. Um, I just want to point out one other thing. We talked about how she raised twenty five thousand uh, versus the two million of her opponent, and how she still won. I hope this is a lesson. I hope this is at least a lesson for Democrats. And the Democratic Party, they continue to think money, 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 empty agenda, money, 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 oh, half agenda, money, money, money. Hey, how about you, if you focus on the policy and agenda and the things that American people want? It's gonna come through to them if you actually make an effort to do that as much as you make an effort to talk how much money you've collected and what kind of positions of power the person that you're promoting used to have. It's policy based. People want something to change. Figure that part out. Yeah, uh, they won't learn that lesson. <laughs> I mean, all, all we've heard from uh, Democratic leadership, Democratic establishment really has been um, really minimizing how momentous like these elections have been, like what they really communicate. Um, you know, they'll say that, oh, well, it was a fluke, it was this, it was that. They'll blame it on anything and everything without really accepting that voters are hungry for, for real change. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.